Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. For this video, I mainly want to concentrate on PCB, printed circuit board. This video, I'm going to discuss the PCB EMI radiation. In short, there are two possible in terms of EMI radiation for the PCB. First will be differential mode radiation. Next will be common mode radiation. So for this video, I'm going to discuss the difference between these two, differential mode radiation and common mode radiation. This will be the part for the two series discussion on EMC consideration. I have put the playlist under the description. If you're keen to know more about EMC consideration, please take a look on the playlist in order to have a better understanding on EMC consideration. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. As I mentioned earlier on, what actually caused PCB to have EMI radiation? As I had illustrated earlier on, there are actually two types of EMI radiation in a PCB. For example, we have this differential mode radiation and also common mode radiation. We can start by describe the differential mode radiation. The differential mode radiation, in fact, will be the result of current flowing route by the conductors of the circuit. So take a look on this diagram here. For example, this is a signal path. Okay, so basically this provides a signal path. And remember, all signal will need to have a return. Okay, so basically this will be the return path. And if you look at this over here, the signal path plus the return path, they actually form a loop. When you actually form this form of loop, okay, they potentially become a differential mode radiation. As you can see from this diagram here, they actually become like a small antenna, patch antenna, they actually radiate out. So this is the issue, as I mentioned over here. In a PCB, RF current are generated by a source driver and transferred to a load through a trace. So this is what I mean. Okay, for example, this is a RF current that is generated by a source driver. And what they do is basically they transfer to so-called this is a load. Okay, RF return current must return to their source through a ground return path. Okay, so this is what this sentence means. Okay, so basically the RF return current must return to their source through a ground return path. As a result, a closed loop is developed. As I mentioned also, such a loop may be modeled as a small loop antenna giving rise to radiation. Okay, so this will be some simple definition about differential mode radiation. In short, if the supply plus the return, they actually form a loop, differential mode radiation can actually occur. Okay, for a small loop of area A okay, with current I, okay, the magnitude of the electric field measured in free space at a distant R is in the far field is equal to this equation. Okay, so this is uh, for typically for a very small loop of area okay, with the current in ampere. And this is the so-called your distance that you actually observe. For example, if we are going to conduct this in a 3 meter chamber, the distance will be 3 meter. If we are going to conduct at 10 meter, the distance will be at 10 meter. So this gives you a simple way to calculate how much will be actually radiated out from this loop antenna. For differential mode radiation occur over a ground plane, okay, the emission is double, okay, 6 dB increment because of reflection from the ground plane. Okay, for example, when we actually conduct this differential mode radiation, typically, Okay, you actually have this ground plane. Okay, so when we actually have this issue here, we actually double the emission okay, because of the reflection from the ground plane. And this equation, what you need to do is basically they multiply by two. Okay, so from here, you can see that differential mode radiation actually depends on these three things. One will be on the current. Okay, so the I will be on the current. A will be on the loop area. And then the frequency. Okay, so this R is where the distance is. Typically, we don't have much control. Okay, for example, when we actually conduct an EMC measurement, the distance 
can be either three meter or ten meter. So we don't have much freedom to play on this so called the the distant ah uh, okay. But we can definitely have some control on the frequency okay. As I mentioned earlier on, if we can reduce the frequency, we also reduce this so called emission and also the loop area and also the current okay. In general, if we are able to reduce all this value. Okay, the differential mode radiation will be reduced. Okay, let's come to this. These are all the possible differential mode radiation. Okay, so you can see over here, they basically form a closed loop. Okay, once you form a closed loop, okay, they become a loop antenna and basically radiation actually occur. Okay, so this is another example here. So basically, you can imagine that this is basically to power up this IC. So I use my BCC to power the IC. And I actually have the return path, and they actually went through this decoupling capacitor to return back to the source. Mm -hmm. And from here, you can see that they actually form a loop. So when this actually occur, okay, again, loop antenna become a differential mode radiation. Same for this. Okay, for example, this is a BJT switch. Okay, they turn on and off. Okay, so when they actually so called turn on, you can see that they actually form a loop again. Okay, so once they form a loop. This become an issue because radiate emission can also happen. Okay, so another diagram here. So this is a cross signal. Okay, whatever signal that you have, you definitely need to provide a return path. So when you actually have this return path, you actually form a loop. Can you imagine here? So this is your signal. After that, they return from the ground. You actually form a patch antenna or a loop antenna over here. And again, differential mode radiation can happen. And these are all the typical differential mode radiator. Okay, let's come to the common mode radiation. Okay, common mode radiation is the result of undesired voltage drop in the circuit, cause some part of the circuit to be at a common mode potential above the true ground plane. Okay, so let me just use this diagram to illustrate. Okay, you know that when you actually have a big patch of ground, Okay, every point may not have the equal potential. So imagine this is a huge patch of ground. As I mentioned earlier on, the ground may not have the same potential difference. Let's say there is some small potential difference between these two points. Okay, you, you can actually mimic as this. This like become a voltage source because there is some voltage difference between these two points. And what happened here is this is the antenna that's joined over here this antenna become a source that they actually radiate out. So this is what we call a common mode radiation. Because typically, if we have a ground, that a huge patch of ground, the point on all the ground may not be equal. Just a very small difference, they can become a potential source of radiation for common mode radiation. Okay, so this is the definition of common mode radiation. Often, this is the result of voltage drops in the digital logic ground system. Okay, when external cable are then connected to the system, okay, so this is what we call the external cable, they become an antenna. Okay, they are driven at this common mode potential, forming antenna which radiate electric field. Okay, so this form here is called common mode radiation. Okay, common mode radiation can be modeled as a short, okay, typically less than quarter wavelength monopole antenna okay, driven by the voltage. Common mode radiation is harder to control and normally determine the overall radiate emission performance of the product. So in short, common mode radiation is the dominant factor. If you have differential mode and if you really have common mode, then you probably need to concentrate a little bit more on common mode radiation because firstly, okay, they are very hard to control and typically, the impact, they can be actually become the overall radiate emission performance of the conductor. So in short, you must be especially careful when you actually have this form of common mode radiation. So the key thing is, how can we actually reduce the potential difference between so-called even for a ground? Okay, there is no perfect ground. For short antenna of length L over a ground plane, the electric field measured at a distant r in a far field is described by this equation. 
Okay, so I believe that I have discussed on common mode radiation and also differential mode radiation. Okay, I will put the video list under the description. Okay, so under these two video, you will actually have a better idea on differential mode radiation and common mode radiation. Okay, the key idea why I keep start this also is because I'm going to discuss about PCB layout. And in order to understand on the PCB layout, okay, we definitely need to know the difference between differential mode and common mode radiation. And next, I will be discuss how can we actually minimize the differential mode radiation and common mode radiation by simply using the layout. Okay, the equation above show that radiation is proportional to the frequency f, the length l of the antenna, and the magnitude of a common mode current i on the antenna. Okay, so this is what I mentioned. Okay, so in short, okay, if we want to keen to reduce this common mode radiation, you can consider to reduce the frequency if you can, reduce so-called the current, the magnitude of the current, reduce the length, Okay, so the range that we observe, for example, 3 meter chamber or 10 meter chamber, we can't play so much on the distance. So we typically will omit this part here. So again, okay, so if you find this video, okay, uh, so-called benefit you, okay, please consider to like it and also subscribe to this channel. Please also remember to turn on this notification bell so that you will be able to receive more information from this channel. Guys, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's quickly come to the differential mode and common mode radiation. Okay, so firstly, okay, name the two important objectives to follow in laying out a PCB in order to minimize emission and sustainability of the circuit on the PCB. Okay, so these are the two methods that we need to know. Firstly, okay, because of differential mode radiation, we need to keep the loop area of critical signal. Okay, for example, the clock can be a so-called can become a big issue because they can potentially form a loop area. And with the current return path, okay, they actually can become a form of differential mode radiation. So how to solve this is basically we can use this image plane. Okay, for the return current path. Okay, the image plane will provide a low impedance path for RF current to return to their source and hence reducing EMI emission through flux cancellation. In addition, okay, we use a guard trace to provide additional alternative low impedance return path to the image plane return path. Okay, so this will be the key discussion on the next video. On the next video, I'm going to show you all the good layout. And of course, in order to explain on the good layout, I also need to amplify the bad layout. So how can we actually do a good layout in order to minimize the differential mode and common mode radiation? With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, guys, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you soon.